hello everyone. My name is Patricia Martin Rodilla. I'm now postdoctoral researcher at CTU Center, which is a center in information technology research at the University of Santiago de Compostela. But this work is done together with my partner Xavi Barreiro from Institutic, which is my previous organization. And the main idea of this work is, uh, <clears throat> sorry, to uh, think about if uh, technologies, uh, current technologies, uh, are able to help us in supporting some critical reading uh, studies that are, uh, are very uh, common right now, and especially in heritage legal discourse, in heritage legal text. So the main idea was to use natural language processing techniques and discourse analysis techniques in order to see what happens with these kind of critical reading ideas. Uh, so, firstly, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about the legal context and situation of heritage uh, here in Spain, which is the, the main domain that we have analyzed, and also the ideas uh, uh, emerge from the critical reading that uh, my partners from TPC, Barreiro and Varela Pousa, done, uh, analyzing this uh, heritage uh, legal text. Uh, and uh, that uh, emerged some working hypothesis uh, as a starting point for, for this analysis. Uh, also, we are t uh, talking about what is natural language processing techniques and how we can use it. And finally, I present uh, um, our work methodology and some first results and conclusions. So uh, the legal context in heritage in Spain is quite like a more or less framework or it, at the beginning. We have, of course, uh, laws at a national level, but most of them are, uh, of course, transfer uh, all the competence, the competency, sorry, uh, to the regional governments. So we have uh, regional laws uh, in each part of the gov uh, regional governments. Uh, in this case, we analyze the, the case of Galicia because we uh, live there and our experts uh, analyze it because this uh, law changed recently. We have the old law, which is the 1995, and we have the, the current law from 2016. And we have other ones from other regional uh, governments that we compare with. Uh, the competencies and also the scope is quite similar uh, between both, of course, and also between the, the other ones. Uh, but if you uh, see the, the length of the text, which is very important for our automatic analysis or software analysis, is not. It's quite uh, different. Not in terms of legal articles, in terms of uh, things that we are going to legislate, but just in terms of uh, legal uh, general length and discourse, blah, 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 blah. It's, you know, quite different. Uh, now we are uh, talking a little bit. So uh, my partners from Incipit sorry, uh, published a, an article in Nailos Journal last year, Barreiro uh, Valera Pousa, uh, which called this, the new cultural heritage law of Galicia, a critical reading. And they tried to compare previous cultural heritage laws uh, and other regional uh, laws in Spain from a critical perspective, trying to uh, identify some <clears throat> hypotheses about the trends of change that are taking place in administration, and a more important one, to try to uh, contextualize them in, as part of the neoliberal paradigm and doing some effort to criticize some process of legislation in heritage in Galicia. So uh, we said, OK, this is super cool, but this <laughs> is it possible uh, for us to extract this hypothesis and to see what happens really in the discourse, in the text, with technology? This is the main idea of, uh, of the work. So we extract uh, the working hypothesis of my uh, colleagues, which, is, uh, which are sorry for. Uh, the first one is the ontological expansion of the heritage concept. So they said, OK, in the previous law, uh, <clears throat> the, the ideas about what is uh, heritage and what is not uh, are very different from the new law. So in the new law, there are more things that potentially could be uh, heritage for us. Okay. So uh, in the second uh, hypothesis, they said the new law is more space-based. They present a lot of uh, this kind of space-based heritage management. So for instance, uh, some possible evidence in the discourse could be a lot of space-related terms. So grab uses, EIS, landscape reference, and these kinds of, of things. 
Uh, the third hypothesis is about the amplification of the symbolic and identity dimensions. So this kind of uh, motivations about the heritage, what is and, with, uh, and what is not, about that, our identity, some nationalisms, and this kind of things. And uh, finally, the amplification of economic dimension is the fourth hypothesis of war. So maybe the heritage is uh, more and more and more seen as our resources, as, a, as our economic resources, in the new law than in the previous ones. So we, <coughs> we said, OK, let's do this. Can we detect these trends in this course? In what way are they reflected in the real legal text? And uh, could the current discourse analysis technologies help in in analyze this kind of critical reading and support it in some way, not only uh, seen as an opinion of our experts, but also seen uh, with technology. So we try to use natural language processing and discourse analysis technique to do it. Uh, and uh, what is uh, that? Uh, it's the application of computational techniques to the analysis and synthesis of natural language. Uh, it has been applied to multiple domains, but legal domain is a, a, a classic one. Uh, because uh, it's a very narrative-based domain. Uh, um, legislation uh, is uh, um, composed by the, by the, uh, with a um, fragment or, or controlled vocabulary, so it's good for uh, this kind of applications. And we can do some uh, tasks in, in an automatic or semi-automatic way, such as semantic and synthetic parser, uh, lemmatization, uh, text segmentation, classification, summarization, language identification. So these kind of tasks are now uh, in a good uh, technology moment to apply it. And uh, finally, we have discourse analysis, which try to work in a more abstract level uh, than semantic and syntactic one. So the idea is to try to uh, obtain from the text, for instance, causal relations or contrast relation, generalization, and this kind of thing, which could be very good in order to analyze this kind of ideas in the discourse, in the real test. So um, we define our methodology in three phases. In the phase one, we prepare the test because it's very, um, you know, important in this kind of things. Uh, we have the legal text, uh, the legal text of sources in Spanish and Galician, which is important for this kind of publication. It's not English, so we are going to talk about that uh, later. And we ask our experts in the critical reading to annotate the test manually, okay, uh, with uh, all the um, terminology, expressions, and this kind of things that uh, they think could be interesting for each hypothesis of uh, work that we uh, uh, said before. We also select the algorithms that we are going to use and develop for this kind of analysis. In the phase two, this is the automatic part, okay? We apply, to, we plan to apply in three uh, models. One is uh, natural language processing occurrence study. So the idea is to study uh, uh, the relevance of the terminology that our expert find uh, interesting for each hypothesis in the real test, okay? Uh, the discourse analysis model, the idea is to extract this causal, contrast, uh, relations, generalization, exemplifications, this kind of relation more uh, in more abstraction level. And finally, the agents extraction model, which is uh, a model in order to extract from text in an automatic way who's involved in the text. So persons, organizations, and this kind of uh, uh, categories of entities that could be present in our text. And finally, we come back to our expert and said, okay, this hypothesis is supported in the discourse or not? This kind of questions. So the real world that we um, have done, this is the uh, one of the tests, uh, in, in this case uh, in Spanish, but we have annotation for Spanish and Galician. And uh, the expert uh, annotates all the tests, uh, the, the real tests, and also all the kind of term, the terms that they think that could be interesting for uh, each hypothesis. We work uh, all time. Uh, across the entire methodology uh, drives for this uh, initial hypothesis of work, okay? And also we select the uh, algorithms that we are going to use for analyzing this text. Uh, in this case, we use LinguaKit, which is a natural language processing technology from the University of Santiago de Compostela. There are others, uh, even more standards. For instance, in Python, we have NLTK, or we have Stanford, which is very uh, good and tested, but the idea to use LinguaKit is uh, because, okay, we have uh, linguists uh, working with us, so we have Go and to ask them 
for linguistic uh, ideas and uh, obtain the feedback immediately. Also, LinguaKit is uh, completely open source. We can go to GitHub, uh, download all the code, uh, contribute with a new module if you want, etc. And also, LinguaKit is uh, multilingual support. So we have Spanish, Galician, Portuguese, and English. Uh, all the tags, the little tags, so tokenism, grammatization, etc., etc., in four languages. So it's quite good uh, uh, set. And uh, this is uh, uh, one X, uh, XML source, it looks like. Uh, we have the test and we have uh, the annotations. Okay. We have the annotation of our expert, uh, drives by this hypothesis, okay? So, in the second phase, uh, the first module was the natural language processing occurrence study. The idea is that we have our hypothesis, all the terms annotated, and for each term, firstly, we start uh, doing a frequency study. So we count the, th the occurrence of the term uh, in both law. Uh, regarding tokens, the, this is the, uh, only the original term that the, uh, our expert annotated. And also <clears throat> at a level of lemma, so not only the term, but also all the, fam the terms of the same family that are in the text, okay? But we realized that this uh, approach could be a little naive because we have two very different length tests. So if you, we are going to talk to count occurrence, there's not comparison uh, available at all. So our idea is to find some metrics or some uh, uh, idea uh, uh, based on the relevance of, of the term and not uh, in the length of the or number of uh, occurrence in the, in the text. So finally, we find this, which is the TFIDF, term frequency inverse document frequency, which is a metric from information retrieval, text mining, and this kind of thing. And it's a numerical statistical indicator that is tend to reflect how important a word in, uh, is in a document. So this could be interesting for us. One term annotated by the word is that how relevant is in our law in 1991, sorry, 1995, or in the new law. Okay. We have other module called Discourse Analysis Module. Uh, the idea, the initial idea was to apply rhetorical structure theory, which is uh, a theory uh, to analyze the text in these terms in order to extract, for instance, causal relation, simplification, attribution constructs, and see the reflection of our critical reading hypothesis in the discourse employed. But we have a problem with this module because the automatic parsers are only available for English in, at this moment. So we have our textual sources in Spanish and Galician and uh, are very uh, specific tests uh, about laws in heritage that are very dif difficult to, to translate in a good quality and with all the you know uh, quality of the of the text. So we plan to uh, we are uh, now in contact with uh, some groups that are, are working uh, in linguistics to doing automatic parses for Spanish in the in this way, and we are in contact in order to uh, work together in order to be able to analyze this and to extract these causals and exemplification in Spanish for our legislation uh, text. And finally, we have the agents extraction module. So we uh, ask about who are the decision makers and who has heritage, legal competencies, or use rights or exploitation rights in our test. Uh, so we develop an ad hoc algorithm based on the name entity recognition of uh, lingua kit. And uh, the idea was we, we extract with the algorithm not only the persons that appears in the text, the organization that appears in the text, but also the roles of people uh, that appears in the text and also the job positions or this kind of thing. So for instance, uh, that is called in natural language processing titles, but it's for instance, the president of Junta de Galicia, the, this kind of uh, structures that could be interesting for us. In order to uh, um, answer this, who are the decision makers? So first results. We organize the results by hypothesis. So our initial hypothesis, remember that it's uh, the, this ontological expansion of the heritage concept. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have in the first column uh, terms that are in the uh, are relevance in the first law. We have in the second columns terms that are relevant, especially relevant in the second law. And we have in this column 
Uh, terms relevant for both law, but of course we have uh, in the metrics uh, a higher score in one than in other. And if you uh, see in this kind of uh, in this hypothesis, we can see that a lot of uh, terms related with disciplines are relevant for the second law. And also we uh, observe that the abstraction of the terms in the second law, for instance, memory or nature or relevance or use, are uh, higher than. Uh, the, the level of abstraction of the terminologies in the previous law, that museum, monument, and this kind of thing. So maybe this heritage, uh, sorry, uh, ontological expansion of the heritage concept, it's uh, supported by this kind of, of uses, to use a more abstract uh, terminology. Regarding also the uh, agents detection, the decision makers, uh, we are not sure about uh, these changes in the in the decision makers, so we extract a lot of decision makers that are relevant on both documents. But uh, we uh, observe that uh, local institutions are more le relevant in, in the second law. So maybe no, there is there is no more agents in the second law, but there is more local agents in the second law. So maybe local institutions are more involved in the current law than in the previous one. Okay, this, this allusion to Galicia and this kind of uh, territorial uh, institutions, etc., could be interesting to analyze it. Uh, this, the second hypothesis is related to the space based heritage management, and for us, it's quite clear that all these terms urbanism, urban planning, topography, geographic, etc., sorry, are uh, more relevant in the second law than in the previous one. So, this is uh, an hypothesis that it's quite uh, clear the support in the discourse. In, this, in the third one, it's not so clear for us because these uh, allusions to Galicia, Galician, authenticity, identity, and these identity terms are not relevant in the second law or in the previous one. So for us, this is the hypothesis more weak in this, in this sense, in the, in the critical reading. And finally, uh, the amplification of the economic dimension is also quite clear. So terminologies like, sorry, terms like prosperity, wealth, employment, sponsorship, patronage, sustainability, are present uh, with a high score of relevance in the current law and not in the previous one. So, so uh, this is uh, more or less uh, the, the, this, the um, final conclusion. So we have uh, three hypotheses more or less support and one hypothesis not so clear. <laughs> and uh, as a conclusion, uh, the critical reading identifies, in, a, in our opinion, in an accurate way, trends of change in cultural heritage legislation, and these changes are clearly reflected in the discourse. We can go with technologies, we can go and see it on the text. Uh, these results show the value of this semantomatic analysis uh, as a suitable basis for critical reading. Uh, we envision this kind of methodology always as a supervised process in direct contact with the authors of the text, not an automatic analysis. And uh, of course, it's completely source dependency in terms of language. So we can do it because we have tools in Spanish for doing it. And in case we don't have it, we, don't, we can't do it, okay? And legal is a very good domain. Maybe if we touch other kind of domain, it's not so clear. Uh, as a future, we plan to uh, apply this discourse uh, parsing in Spanish, also work with uh, comparison with uh, general use language corpus, so in order to see if one trend of change it is related with trends in general or changes in general in language uses or, uh, or not, and to apply some semantic polarity. And the idea is to go towards a design methodology to use this discourse analysis in critical reading support. So, Thank you very much, I'm sorry for...